1820, there were probably a million black rhinos in Africa. Today, barely 3,600 survive. In one 47-year period in the late 1800s, records show the horns of 170,000 rhinos passed through Zanzibar, whilst Bagamoyo and Mafia in Tanzania were exporting at a similar rate. By 1960, the killing across Africa finally brought the black rhino to a level that put the species at risk. Rhinos were being exterminated because people living in the east had, for a thousand years or so, believed in the medicinal properties of rhino horn, skin, bone and urine. Scientific analysis proves there is little medicinal value in any rhino product, and it's an unfounded myth that rhino horn is an aphrodisiac. Today, there is a greater threat to rhinos. During the time of the huge increases in oil revenue, Yemenis were repatriating as much as a million dollars a day from working in Middle Eastern countries. Many more Yemenis were now able to afford what they saw as the status symbol of all status symbols, a dagger with a rhino horn handle valued in thousands of dollars. After the handles are cut from the horns, the chippings are sold to China. Then the word everyone is waiting for comes in. The rangers report they have caught up with the second bandit. At this stage, it's still unclear what has happened. The main concern is, are all the rangers safe? As soon as the commanding officers arrive at the scene, the rangers report the bandit fired at them from concealment. He's dead. His gun will no longer be used to destroy people and wild animals, and he's paid the ultimate price. There they are the horns from the dead rhino. Value when they reach the international market more than three million shillings. The loss to Kenya, many times that. This bandit was sentenced to 23 years in jail for killing the rhino. The Kenya Rhino Management Plan has advocated for years that KWS, police, customs and the judiciary should cooperate to stop poaching. A poacher receives only a fraction of the price on the international market but every time a rhino dies, Kenyans, who benefit from rhinos in many areas, lose part of their future forever. In the Shoshluwi Umfolozi Game Reserve in KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa, that dedicated effort required for rhino conservation has paid off in a remarkable way. In 1900, there were only 50 to 70 white rhinos left, where once there had been thousands. Today, there are over 11,000 white rhinos in South Africa, a success story to be noted surely by everyone concerned for rhinos. To see rhinos in this number in Kenya is surely proof of success. In 2002, 20 years after the original seven East African rhinos were sent to Addo National Park in South Africa, four of their offspring returned in great style to Tanzania. The importance of these rhinos to Tanzania is such that the government has taken steps to upgrade Mkumazi Game Reserve to full national park status, thereby giving the rhinos maximum protection. Somali bandits struck again in Kenya's Savo National Park. The poachers fled with the horns. KWS patrols intercepted the bandits. Two bandits died in a bloody shootout. But this time, the reality of what it means to be a KWS ranger protecting Kenya's wildlife was brought home to everyone involved in the struggle against the armed bandits threatening the country's elephants and rhinos. Ranger Mohamed Sombwana and Corporal Minor Ngari were shot and killed carrying out their duty. No man can make a greater sacrifice. No one should betray the memory of these men and others who have died to save wildlife by not giving of their best at all times. When there is demand, there will always be killing.